we're going to talk about all of my seed starting kit, gadgets, bits and pieces. Might be the first thing to tell you about then. If you're starting lots of seeds, it's kind of handy to have a nice flat workspace to, you know, get them started on. Doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need a fancy potting shed as much as I'd love one. You work with what you've got. This is an old desktop. Ah, oh, knees. Oh. The first thing that has to be said, and this is a bit of a running joke on YouTube, no matter what the subject matter, all of this kit you see me with, you don't need any of it, okay? So I'm showing you what I have. Please do not think you have to buy things because you see them on another gardener's Instagram, YouTube, any of that stuff, okay? I'm just showing you what I've got, but you don't have to go and buy loads of kit. And with that then, let me talk about all the hunters of kit I've got. So these are, they're not essentials in any way. It's just, this is the stuff I've got for starting seeds and we're gonna chat about them. And of course, there's one more essential. Thank you, my darling. Um, this is a running joke with all the long-standing viewers in this channel. Whenever I do any seed starting, I usually get compost in my tea. So yeah, the first thing you need is a cup of tea, coffee, drink of your choice. Where the hell am I gonna put it? The obvious thing to start on then is you need to put your seeds somewhere in order to get them to germinate. Right, now you can see I've got a whole heap of different pots and trees and things of different sizes. Again, I have this stuff because I've collected it all over the years. Now, Tracy and Michelle, from the two girls who lost the plot on Instagram, complained that they had pot envy because I had all these matching pots. Um, I only have all these matching pots because over the years you buy so many pots and they start to match over a long period of time. So do not have envy. You can, of course, buy pots and you'll get all the same colour. But trust me, you'll just collect them over the years. But the good thing is having different sizes of pots is really useful. Now, I would have to go climb it around to find them for you, but I've got some ridiculously small pots that are no use to man nor beast. That's probably the smallest usable pot I use. The idea being, you've then got different sized pots for moving your plants up. More on that. Pots. The other thing is trays or flats. These are my two, I'm gonna make a mess. These are my two sets of seed trays or flats. This one is a half size, this is a full size. They're standard sizes. The reason you have standard sizing is because you can buy all sorts of accessories and things like, you know, propagator lids to go on top, all that kind of thing. But essentially, it really is just half size and full size. Module trays. Again, all different types and sizes. Why would you use different size things? Because traditionally, okay, I'm not saying you have to do it this way. The traditional way of starting your seeds is you start them off in something very small. So that's what this is. These are basically designed to start your seeds in. Obviously they're incredibly small, so you can't keep your little seedlings in there for long at all. You then have to move them up to something that's slightly bigger. Then they'll get too big for that and you'll move them up to something slightly bigger until it's time to plant them in the final home. Now, as I said, that's traditionally how it's done. For the guys who've been with me a while, you know I have been asking this question for years of, do you have to do that? And if so, why? And I haven't found any definitive answer of that you have to do that. It is that thing where we find things we can do that give us the best possible results. And so that's what people do over time. You learn to garden and you always do the things that give you the best possible results. One of the reasonings that I found for doing, starting your seeds in a very small space and moving them on gradually is simply because those tiny little seedlings and their tiny little roots are incredibly delicate. 
they don't use a whole heap of water to start with. So if you put them in, say, a pot that size, there's all of that compost, and when you water it, the little seedling doesn't use it all up. So it's then sitting for too long in wet compost, and it can cause root rot. Uh, you'll see your soil goes green on top because you get icky stuff growing in it. You even get crusty soil on top, all of that kind of stuff. And it just means it's not the perfect environment for the little seedlings. So that's why a lot of folks start small and only move them up sizes gradually as your little seedling gets bigger and starts using more and more water and needs more and more space. The other thing, now I have said all this, I've got an entire playlist of videos about starting seeds and bringing seeds on and all the prep stuff and all of that for new gardeners. So I will link that at the end of the video and in the description. But in that I also mentioned when you start seeds off, they do not need loads of nutritious compost. But as those seedlings grow, they will start needing nutrition. So again, if you're starting them in something tiny, there's not a whole heap of nutrition in there. So you need to move them on and give them more compost so that they have the food they need. You will see as well that we've got some short, some long. The reason again for that, these are called root trainers and you get lots of different types. I've had so many different types over the years. These are for plants that like to have a really long root run that is not disturbed when you transplant. Things like your sweet peas. So you would use this type of system rather than a small short pot so that you can let them grow for a while before you transplant them and you're then not disturbing the roots. So root trainers are long pots. So yeah, so you can see there, this is my little fox gloves that I sewed back in August, September, and they're in these little pots. Okay then, that um, brings me on to this. This is a seed tamper. I have been saying for years I need to get one of these, and Kate's been saying I'll make you one, finally. It's like 12 years. I've got one. So what this does then, you have, if you're using these little flats, it's a perfect example. You want to make sure that your seeds are in contact with that nice, moist, seed-starting environment, okay? And the way you can do that is to press them down. Now, I've done it using the bottom of the pot, bottom of the other tray, my hands, all of that kind of thing. This is just a quick and easy way because it does a lot in one go. You can buy these, but I just think it's a bit of wood with a handle, so I kept saying I'm not buying one, but yeah. So then I can just press down. Fabulous. Kate to the rescue yet again. Right. You've heard me say compost, seed starter mix, potting mix, you know, all of those different terms. I'm not going to go into detail about it because it is in that playlist I mentioned that I'll link at the end of the video and it's in the description. Now, one of the things is when you start a lot of plants from seed, when you really start getting into doing all your own seed starting, you realise that you use an awful lot of growing medium whatever it is you're going to call it. And it gets really expensive if you're constantly buying that stuff. So I make my own. One of the things then is where do I store all of that? How do I keep it on hand for when I need it? Let's jump to later on today when I've cleared some space so I can show you. So I mentioned then that I make my own potting mixes, seed start mixes, etc. So I need somewhere to keep all of those bits and pieces. So what I use is these big IKEA storage boxes. They're actually for putting your recycling in. Best bit is that it's got this little flippy lid. So it means that I can get in there really easily and get my compost, or I can take the whole lid off. Hopefully you can see I've got a few in here because, you know, I've got them separated into say compost, cocoa coir if you're using cocoa coir, perlite or vermiculite if you use perlite or vermiculite. Just an easy way to store things. Just keeps things tidy. It means everything's to hand as I need it. And I can easily be saying, oh, I need a little bit of compost. I need some vermiculite or perlite or whatever you're using and I can make my mixes. Can grab pots, 
and everything's to hand. It just keeps things nice and easy and simple. Now, this guy. You guys ask me about this all the time. This is a potting tree, or sometimes it's called a greenhouse tidy. And it comes in two parts. There's a big tree, and this is just a handy shelf that fits on top that I keep my pens and dibbers and stuff in. Just means I can work here, fill up pots, seed trays, etc, etc. Sow my seeds. Oh look, and look, use my new tamper. And it's a nice clean surface to work in. <laughs> that means you don't make a mess. Now, it's great and I love it. I've had this guy for years. But, like everything, you don't have to buy these types of specific things, especially if you're not in a kind of greenhouse situation. Maybe you do your seed starting on your dining room table. This is one of those car boot liners you can get. And it even comes with these little clippy corners to make a kind of tree. You can use that. You can just spread out, I don't know, some rubbish sacks. Whatever you can get your hands on. These are simply just ways of keeping things tidy. Making it easy to clean up after yourself. And of course the downside of having all this kind of stuff is you then have to fold it and store it somewhere. These are two of the sieves I was talking about when I was saying how I can sieve my compost to make it super fine. You don't need to have all this fancy kit. For years I've just been using the big homemade one that Kate made me, but you get birthday presents, Christmas presents, what have you. So compost, whether it's homemade or you buy it, has lots of bits and bobs in it, bits of twig, all the usual stuff, and you might want to get it out. If you start off with a super fine sieve, you're going to be there forever. And, you know, we don't want to be out for hours just sieving compost, because it's going to put us off doing it. This one is actually not bad if you're just doing small amounts. So if you just do this every time you're sowing seeds, this guy's awesome. Or you can go slightly bigger. This is a much bigger sieve and I mean that in terms of physically it's bigger but also the gauge of it is much bigger and that means first time fresh compost when it's still got lots of those big bits and bobs I put it in here and I use this to riddle it or sieve it and it just means that I'm not trying to get fresh big lumpy compost through one of those little sieves. These are my famous seed starting tools. <laughs> Famous because they are horrendously ugly and lime green. Also because I joked a couple of years ago when I first introduced these, um, the cats bought me these as a Christmas present. Yes, we are those type of people that our cats buy each other presents. Um, anyways, this is called a dibber. It is basically for making a hole in the soil. So you can drop a seed into it, put a little plant seedling into it, that kind of thing. And you get them in different sizes. So really fine, slightly thicker. I've got a huge one somewhere. Really big one for a big seedling. Okay. Thing is, like I keep saying, you don't have to buy all of this kit. Oh look, dibbers. Dibber. Yeah? So again, just because we have stuff doesn't mean you have to buy it, but this is what all this stuff is that you can see that I've got and how I use it. So sometimes you'll see me just sticking a pen in the ground for a hole, or my finger, or these, or whatever. You just use what you have. This one, is basically a little fork pronged bit or a little spoon type bit. And this is something you'll hear me say a lot, pricking out, okay? And um, basically it's, I think that's a UK term, but it is when we pull little seedlings out of the soil and this is to help us get them out of there. So you hold it by the leaf, dig in and pull it out and then you do as little damage to the roots as possible. Again, you don't need fancy tools for that. You can use, What about your seed labels? A spoon from the kitchen? Your pen? Your, it's just something to help you get into the soil and not pull and rip at the roots. So that's all that is. Essential kit that I always forget, so I'm saying to you guys so that you will keep reminding me when I forget. Labels and a pen. I leave these out in the greenhouse all year. I never take them indoors. Someone asked me recently if the ink in my pen freezes or anything. No issues. 
keep labels on hand wherever you're doing seed starting so that you don't forget because you will find that about 20 seedlings from all sorts of different plants will actually be identical when they're seedlings. So um, yeah, this is a brilliant way to make sure you don't ever have to do that. I'll let it grow on and find out what it is. Because, um, you know, mystery plants are always fun. All pens, unless you buy special fancy pens, the ink fades in sunlight. So pencils are actually best for doing this. Pencils don't fade as quickly. So here's the thing then. I haven't spoken about propagators, heated propagators, heat mats, grow lights. Basically, you don't need to add heat and light unless you're starting seeds early. But little propagators are useful. They are essentially just somewhere to put your seeds or your seed tray. In this case, you actually use this seed tray. And then there's these dome lids that go on top. Now, what they do is they help keep all that humidity in there. So you've got little vents and you must open the vents, guys. I know it's almost a feeling like you close them for heat, but no, you need to keep the vents open because you need that ventilation. Otherwise, you'll get fungus and mold and algae and the potential pathogens like damping off. So you need to let ventilation in. But you get propagators in all different sizes. So this one is designed for you to actually sow your seeds in there. Ta -da! The difference with this one is simply the levels. So you start it off and it just looks like a normal propagator but slightly bigger. Okay, so I can put pots in here, seed flats in here. It's not just that I do one lot of seedlings, I can put lots of pots and seed trays and things in here. But what I like about this one is the option to make it taller. So this is now where it stops being just a propagator. This is now where it just becomes a little safe spot for your little seedlings. So if it's particularly frosty at night, I know there's going to be a frost. I can come out and use this as a way of protecting little plants. And again, because you're doing that, there's extra elements of ventilation. Each layer has more vents. And again, even when it's cold and frosty, I will still have these open because it still needs ventilation. And I can go three high. We can go up a size again, exactly the same thing. It's a bigger propagator lid and this actually fits over these big green trays that you see me using. And again, the idea isn't that you do this and you plant directly into compost in them. This is me just making use of things. The idea is that you can actually put little pots and seed trays and things in here so you can have lots of things in one propagator rather than needing lots and lots and lots of little propagators. Just different ways of doing things. But again, ventilation super important. Now, I actually have lots of these plastic storage boxes. I use them for storage. I've used them for keeping compost in, that kind of thing. But I have also used these as propagators. Because it's clear, so light gets in. But it's a nice contained environment. So again, you don't have to go and buy special fancy gardening kit. Use what you have. That is Eli's whirlwind tour of all of my little odds and sods for seed starting. That video playlist I promised you, right there. Lots and lots of information about seed starting and starting your gardening year off. See you folks. <laughs>